Hey fellow devs, this is a feature showcase and also a tutorial for the new 109 version of Dream Tech Splice. I'm Mitko and I'll show you what our latest update has in store for you guys. We always look at what everyone creates using our plugin and always listen to your feedback. And this is why we have redesigned the mesh generation workflow completely and introduced a whole new component for you in 109. We want to provide a flexible, stable and effective way for you to create spline based meshes. So meet the spline mesh. Up until now we had the extrude mesh component, which was used to extrude meshes along splines. And we still have it, but this new spline mesh component, this is the way of the future. No, but seriously, we have deprecated the extrude mesh component in favor of the spline mesh and I can't wait to show you why. First of all, the spline mesh looks like any other spline user component and it kind of looks like the extrude mesh component too. However, here you have two sub-levels of control of which the first is the channel. The spline mesh component can have multiple channels with different generation rules. By default, it comes with a single channel called, well, channel. I'm now going to create a road infrastructure with the spline mesh component to show you how it works. Now if I go to my project tab here, you'll see that I have a bunch of road models. I have the road itself, well, it's actually only the right half of it. I have a rail model and a land model. And I'm going to use these three models in conjunction with the spline mesh to create the road infrastructure. So I'm going to go to the road channel here and drag the road mesh to the add mesh field here. This is going to ask me if I want to use the road material, I'm going to say yes. And yes, again, this is going to extrude the road mesh along the spline. And right now my count is set to 4, so the road repeats 4 times along the spline. I can decrease it or increase it, but I'm going to leave it at, well, maybe 6. So, how do we duplicate a mirrored instance of the road to the other side to make the full road? Well, what I can do is go to the second sub-level of control which is the mesh configuration window. The mesh configuration is basically an import setting for the mesh. If you want to change the extrude axis, the scale of the mesh, or fiddle with the UVs, you can go here. This is going to apply transformation to the mesh, but it's also going to catch these transformations so that they aren't calculated during the rest of the extrusion. So this will not recalculate all those meshes here. So what I can do here is hit X for the mirror. And this is going to mirror the road to the other side, but it doesn't duplicate it. So if I revert it, what I can do is add the road again. And this time select X for this instance. And what this is going to do is it is going to create a checker pattern because each channel places the meshes one after each other. So this doesn't work for me. But what I can do is duplicate the channel. To do that, I hover over the channel name, right click, and select duplicate. Now in this duplicated channel, what I can do is go to the road mesh and select mirror X. There we go. Now we have the road. And yes, that's great, but what about the rails and the lamp models? To do that, we'll need new channels to put the rail mesh in. Click yes for the mesh. And don't worry about this, we'll fix it later. This happened because we just added the rail material to the material array of the mesh render. So what I'm gonna do now is expand channel 3, rename it to rail, maybe rail right. And then here in the override tab, I'm going to select material IDs and set the target ID to 1. This indicates that all meshes inside this channel will use the second material from the mesh renderer. Now let's set the count to 6. And now let's move the rail to the side. So we already know that I can apply various transformations to the meshes inside the computer mesh window. And I can move the offset here, but what I can also do is override the offset through the channel. So in this case, I'm going to modify the offset inside the channel. And there we go. Now, of course we have to do this for the left side. So right click, duplicate. Rename the new channel to left. Then go inside the mesh configuration and hit X. This, however, will not duplicate the mesh over to the left side because it mirrors the mesh only along its local axis. So to do the rest, we go here and set a negative offset for the X. There we go. And this whole thing is a single mesh right now. Now for the lamps. And the lamps are a little bit trickier because they can't be just simply extruded along the path. Why? Well, 
let me show you. I'm going to drag the lamp, select yes, hit. You can already see that something is not right, but just let me override the material. Okay, and well, maybe increase the count. And we can see that the lamps, <laughs> well, they don't look like they're feeling really well right now, do they? They're just stretched along the spine and they don't look like lamps, all right? And this is because they're being extruded along the spine like a regular mesh. But this is why we have the channel type setting. And right now it's set to extrude, but we can also set it to place. And place, we will just place the lamp along the spline without deforming it. And I'm going to set the, the count to, well, maybe 12. And set the offset. And now let's bring them over to the other side. And here, what I can do is I can mirror those lamps inside the mesh configuration window. So, okay, I can, I can hit X. But what I can also do is set the rotation to 180. Or set the rotation to 180 from inside the channel. So, rotation 180. And there we have it. We have this complete road structure, which is a single mesh that uses three materials. Now, there's a problem. Check this out. If I go here and take this plant point and move it upwards, what is going to happen is the lamps are going to stay perpendicular to the road. And this isn't really how things in real life work. I mean, lamps should point up no matter what the angle of the road is. So, what we can do to fix this is go to the lamps channel and here at the bottom we have override and we can select to override the normal. This is going to present me with a vector tree field to define the normal but since I needed a world of normal, 010 does the job for me. And you can see that the lamps here on the right side now point upwards. And this works even if I modify the splines normal. Now let's look at some randomization options. I have a new spline with a spline mesh component attached to it and I'm going to add the basic cube provided by Unity inside the channel. And I'm going to increase the count and instead of extrude I'm going to set the channel type to place. And we can see all the cubes marching in a line, boring and uh, yeah, nothing really special. So what we can do is randomize offsets, randomize rotation, randomize scale and add more meshes and iterate between them in an ordered or randomized fashion. So let's see what happens if I add a new mesh. I'm going to add the sphere mesh. Right now, the meshes are iterated in the order they're added. So we have the cube and the sphere. So it goes cube, sphere, cube, sphere, cube, sphere. But what we can do is randomize the order by toggling random order here. And this is also going to provide me with a seed property, which I can modify to change the randomization. But let's go back to just using cubes because I really want to crank up the count, make it 200 maybe. So let's take a look at the randomized offset. So changing the offset here just changes the offset of all cubes and it doesn't really look cool. In fact, it really looks weird. But if I toggle random offset, this is going to give me another offset field and the offsets will get iterated between those two values here. Same goes for the rotation. We can apply the same rotation to all cubes or we can have random rotation. And the scale, well, the scale is a little bit tricky. Why? Well, because by default, the scale is applied on each axis separately. So for example, if I set this to 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and 0.5 and this to 2, 2 and 2, what we're gonna get is cubes of all shapes and sizes because each axis gets scaled separately. But if we don't want this to happen, we can toggle the uniform scale mode and this is going to lure between those two values in one single run instead of handling the different axes separately. And once again, spline normals and sizes do affect the mesh, so keep that in mind. So that's about it for the spline mesh component. I'm super excited to see what you guys make with it, so if you end up making something cool, send it our way, show it to us. I can't wait to see some cool stuff made with it, and uh, we might even post it on Facebook. Now one last thing before I go is another new component, and this one is the edge collider generator and it simply creates a 2D edge collider and it's nothing exciting really it's I mean I made this video just for the spline mesh component right and uh, yeah well thanks for watching guys and I really hope you liked the new components this one not this one this this one is just pure boring but I really hope you like the spline mesh component and if you did give this video a thumbs up and 
I really can't wait to see what you make with it.